Oh, for me, excellent. everything well has done. just sort of panned out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Easy guys and welcome to Showtime, celebrating the music, art and culture of Chesterfield, Derbyshire and the Peak District. Uh, firstly, I'd like to say massive thanks to everyone who tuned in to the pilot episode with David McPhee talking about Joe Cocker and a lot of the bands in Chesterfield in the 60s. If you haven't already, uh, please help me out by uh, liking and subscribing and generally, uh, if you can, make some comments and any suggestions. I'm all ears about that sort of stuff. Okay, my next guest is an ambitious filmmaker from Chesterfield who, at the tender age of 19, has already got a release on Amazon Prime. He's currently working on a documentary about the life of Dave Berry, uh, another local musician who had a hit in the 60s with The Crying Game. I caught up with Kai Undrell at Chesterfield Rehearsal Space on Saltergate to talk all things film. Enjoy. There we are. That was fun. Mr. Kai Andro. Thank you. Coming at you. Thank you for having me. Yeah, thank you for coming. It's, um, it's really nice. It's, um, yeah, here we go. First first episode proper. First, yeah, yeah. I, saw I the guess David we could McPhee. call, yeah, yeah, David McPhee. I think we could call that the pilot, couldn't we? Yeah, and so, I went um, down really well. It and, was all right, it, man. It's so about 15,000 views yeah, so like, far. And that's, uh, that's like incredible. Yeah. And but, it's nice to be on like the second episode ever. Because, okay. Because, yeah, you, know, great. you could make it, man. I'm, and, I'm, and, I'm, we're here at uh, uh, Chesterfield Rehearsal Space on oh, Saltergate. Yeah. So Saltergate is famous again. I love after Saltergate. The, after the fo football, uh, the football team moved away down to Whitmore. Oh yeah, it's an estate now, isn't it? It is an estate. Yeah, it's not all, bad though. It looks quite nice. All the it's, houses. It's all right, I yeah. prefer the football club. Yeah, I think, well, I think <laughs> but, so. But you know, I think it needed to move, didn't it? I think so. Yeah, um, yeah but it's it's nice though. I, I love this space. Um, my dad has this like little band type thing he does in his spare time. Okay. Um, and they've rehearsed in this very room actually before. Have they? Yeah. Right. Yeah, okay. Yeah, definitely. Right. Yeah. Okay. He loves it. He loves it. With with your uncle Dave. Yeah, I think it was Band of Brothers that he that's what he called <laughs> them because it's all him and all my uncles, his brothers. Okay. And like uh, yeah, Uncle Dave, Uncle Steve. I think right. Uncle Andy was there as well. My right. auntie Deb's husband. So yeah. Um, yeah. So great space. Okay. So the so the all they are literally all brothers. They are literally, oh, well, apart from Uncle Andy, because he's married to my dad's actual sister. Oh, okay. But, but they're all family. Uh -huh. They're yeah, all family, yeah, you know, yeah, and whatever. he's awesome. He plays bass. Excellent. My Uncle Andy sits there, he's like playing bass. It's great. I saw them playing at uh, Millfest in Brimington. Oh, yeah. Um, not last year, because we played last year, didn't Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah we played last year, um, and they played the year before, didn't they? Yeah. Uh, uh -huh. Millfest is like so fun. Yeah. Lots Obviously. of MILFs, lots of MILFs there. There's lots of MILFs at yeah. Millfest. <laughs> lots of MILFs at Millfest. Although the problem is, they're all family. They're all family. <laughs> yeah. Um, That's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, yeah. All good fun. So yeah, no, a great fun. Really good, really good gig. Cool. Yeah, it's, it is a good gig, and, and completely like in the middle of nowhere. Oh, so, God, yeah. so yeah, yeah, yeah it's good like, stuff. Yeah, the fa our family's that big, and uh -huh. family and friends are that wide. We have to have a whole festival uh -huh. just to see each other. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, great yeah. stuff. Yeah, yeah. So here we are, Kai. It's great you could join us. Um, I'm just setting my table out. Uh, here's Ness. Ness is a. Uh, we've always had black cats in in my family. Oh wait, the like, one that like lies on the chair. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's, he's 18. So this is 18. Yeah, he's 18. Yeah. I've got a 15 year old cat. Have you? I'm 16. Right. Yeah. Wow. Right. Right. Amazing. Okay. So this great. is Ness. Brilliant. He came on the cruise with me when we played the cruise and oh, a couple years ago. Cruise? Three years ago, we played the uh, rock the boat cru cruise with um, Susie Susie Quattro. Oh right. And um, oh, cool. Slade and the Yardbirds and stuff. It was really cool actually. We just the went around the bridge. Slade and Yard. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus Christ! Yeah, yeah, that's I would cool. kill to be there with the Yardbirds. Yeah, well, there's, there's only one of the original members, but it was um, wasn't yeah. Eric Clapton, was it? Uh, it wasn't. No, no, <laughs> I was no, going to no, say no. I would. Kill it was to only be the drummer, but um, yeah, one yeah. of the guys was from jo um, God, Joan Jett and the Black Hearts. Cool. We, we chatted to him and it won the Scottish Ports. Yeah, but, um, that was a really good experience, man. Really, really good. The, the Wonder that, yeah. did so. So yeah, he came with me on that cruise. This is Ness. Uh, and what about that little guy there? This this guy. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, I mean, I'm building up the props as we go along. So this guy is um, Hanuman. 
Yeah. So he's one of my favourite gods from from uh, India, and uh, cool. his strength he keeps me strong. You know, yeah. So I can do this. Yeah. So Hanuman, um, he rescued a princess who was um, kidnapped. Wow. Um, and he built a bridge to uh, Sri Lanka, um, and all the monkeys went along, fought the evil. Uh, demon and um, yeah I've been to his temple actually in Hampi in India oh cool it was yeah amazing was probably the most ma- one of the most magical amazing experience I've ever had in my life I, I love all that kind of stuff so Lords yeah and gods so and, that was pretty cool so yeah. yeah Hanuman's here to keep me company and keep me strong Nessa's here to um, remind me that I've got to clear his poo up when I get back <laughs> uh, the joys of old cats beer. I've got some books about so yeah so obviously you know from the pilot episode yeah so yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, you need to buy this. I'll put another description in the link below. But this is David McPhee's book. So did you enjoy that episode? Yeah, yeah, I saw that one, and because uh, that was at Palfermans. It, it was. Yeah, we filmed it at Palfermans. I'd have probably done it here, but um, the whole idea was to actually take it to the place, the very place where we recorded Joe Cocker. I was so is... surprised. You know, I used to do keyboard lessons there. Of with course, Jim, who's right. With you in the Jim Palfermans. Yeah, he plays for the Wonder now. I yeah. love Jim so okay. much. He used to teach me. Keyboard. Me too. Yeah, um, great guy. Amazing. Yeah, like, yeah. honestly, um, just he's one of those people that you just like makes you happy. <laughs> yes, <laughs> you know, absolutely. You know, and we need people like that. Yeah, we do. Um, mm-hmm. And so, I was so surprised because when I learned that Joe Cocker like had his origins there. Yeah, yeah. I, like yeah. I was doing, do- doing documentary at the moment about it all. And okay. I thought it was sort of like Sheffield and. Well, he is from Sheffield originally, but he used to yeah. play around here quite a lot. And, and he was going to, I mean, the stories in the in the last episode, but like the, the story was that he was going to pack in and just be a full time gas fest. Uh, yeah. Him. And was it Dave that. And it was Dave that convinced him otherwise and yeah. recorded him in that, in, in, in Palfermans. That's so good. Yeah, it's amazing, yeah. which is about, I don't know, 200 yards from a house. I stumbled across an old tape of Joe Cocker playing. Did you? Who, right. I think it was the Esquire Club. Oh, wow. Um, in fact, I think Dave just put up on his social media um, that he's got hold of an old tape of Joe Cocker playing. Uh, oh, did you see that? Not in Chesterfield. It wasn't Chesterfield. Oh, one think... of his one of his first ever recordings. No, no, no. no. Oh, okay, right. No, I know a... there is one that exists, but I'm not. Well, we, we are, I am allowed to, to talk about it, but well, well, it uh, can't go out there. Yeah, go uh, yeah. On, no, no. Saying. This was at the Esquire Club. Oh, okay. This was like the, uh, now the Esquire, which is now the Leadmill. Uh, the Esquire. Oh, used, yeah. I didn't know that. Right. Okay. The Esquire was upstairs from where the Leadmill is now. Yeah, yeah, right. Um, okay. And uh, yeah, Joe Cocker played there. Everyone played there. Mm-hmm. I mean, everyone. Uh, but Joe Cocker played there, um, and uh, so, yeah, I found that while I was researching for this documentary, I was uh, came across that. Okay, I was into it. It's so, so good. So tell everyone about the uh, the documentary. The you're documentary doing. I'm doing at the moment is a it's a look at sort of like the the British invasion. Uh-huh. So uh, when a lot of people think of the British invasion, <coughs> we all think of like the Beatles mm-hmm. because obviously they're the biggest. I want to do something so different, and I want to kind of move move away from that and look at the more homegrown areas like Manchester, Sheffield, oh, okay. Newcastle, and once a, and also Liverpool. In but, Liverpool, obviously. Yeah, uh, yeah okay. like Jerry and the Pacemakers. People uh-huh. that, because the Beatles are kind of um, the very sort of cliche when you come to think of the like the, the British invasion. Sure, so, right, and when right. I say British invasion, the, the, the docu- documentary sort of covers 1963 to 1967. Okay. And um, we focused on a guy called Dave Berry. Mainly. Sure, right. He's from Drumfield? Thr- from, from, yeah, uh, born in Sheffield. Oh, right, in, okay. Um, Baton, actually, born right. in Baton. Right, okay. Um, yeah, wow. and uh, um, yeah, currently resides in that sort of Drumfield area. Uh-huh. And um, yeah, he's sort of the thread of the story, um, right. but it really is about all the other artists that contributed to to that wave of musicians that moved over to Europe and America and sort of made a name right. for the UK on the music scene. Incredible. So um, Joe Cocker for sure. When you released that, yeah, um, yeah. yeah, yeah. What an exciting project to be involved. It's really in. exciting. And Obviously, at the moment, I don't know anything about when it's coming out because the producers are sorting that and everything. Hi, okay. Hi, Kaz. And uh, <laughs> yeah, and 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 when it's coming out. But I just know it's a really exciting project, and it, it's it's something that um, sort of I suppose to the people I showed it to it really takes them back to that. Okay, era, you know? yeah, yeah, great yeah, stuff. Cause... I mean, yeah, I've had a lot of positive responses, and and you know, to, speaking about the um, Joe Cocker, you know, everyone's yeah. got their own take on it, haven't they? You and know, everyone's so. got their own story yeah. as well. And I noticed that with with 
Dave Berry. Yeah, yeah. Um, there was someone I interviewed, um, Frida Brown, I think her name was. Okay. Uh, and then there was Anne Gregory as well. Okay, and they're just two women who were around at the time. And right. it's so good to look back at, to, to, to research yeah, yeah. and to hear from the people. Because the when you talk to these people, the years really do fall away. Right, yeah, right, okay. Yeah. I like, mean, uh, you must have a great insight into that. I mean, obviously, um, you know, David McPhee had his own thing with, with Chesterfield and, and sure. Joe Cocker, but um, you. you, you I see you interviewed um, John Firminger. John Firminger. Yeah, okay, yeah. John is okay. like so good. John Firminger. Yeah, he was a drummer, wasn't he? He was a drummer. He started out as a as a fan of Dave Berry's. Right, right. Uh, okay. This is all in the documentary. Actually, he started out as a fan of Dave's, and then and then he um, became friends, and then became a drummer for him. Okay. Well, um, although when when Decca um, when he got signed with Decca when Dave Berry was signed by. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, who was it now? The same guy that signed the Beatles, um, right? Basically. Okay. Um, yeah. When when Dave Berry was signed, they said, "Let's, you know, we want to just go with Dave Berry and okay. get rid of the Cruisers and work because he was Dave Berry and the Cruisers." Right. Of course. Yeah. And they said, "Well, how's about you just work with session musicians?" And he said, "Fine." All oh, right. <laughs> you know, so, so yeah. Oh yeah, man, yeah. I didn't realize that. Yeah. Right, so okay. he just became Dave Berry. They also wanted to change his name at one point to Dave Rand. Rand. Uh, Rand. Uh, the currency in. Uh, uh, South Africa South African currency okay, right. because Mickey Most uh, who produced Dave's stuff uh, was living out in South Africa for a while and said we want to call you Dave Rand and he said well we built a good following with Dave Berry yeah okay so, uh, yeah, and yeah, once he gets to a certain point you know you can't really go back so yeah yeah okay. um, yeah mm. for sure but I also interviewed John with uh, with a guy called Mike Firth so Twist Magazine yes and this is my kind of town uh-huh. um, He Mike is the editor of all of those and and we were in um, the Derby Tap on Sheffield Road. Oh, Derby Tup. The Derby Tup, that's yeah, it. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Um, the Derby Tup, and um, it was empty, obviously. It was closed, and we went in there, and it was John and Mike, John Firmage and Mike Firth, and we mm-hmm. were just interviewing them about how they came to, to know Dave, and, and also just about their sort of growing up in... Because, I mean, Mike didn't grow up in that era. Okay. And sort of, like, learning about it, I think, is really important as mm-hmm. well. And kind yeah, of, cause it's an important part so. in our history. Yeah, yeah, I think so. You yeah, know, yeah. Um, for sure. That's um, great you documented that, man. That's I, really I, cool. I have loved it. I, weirdly, I, I won't be doing a documentary after this, though. Um, yeah, okay. So so what, what else you got in, um, in the pipeline after this, then? Um, I'm... Uh, like with stand up, um, which uh, I don't know, you'll talk about it in a bit, but I mean, yeah, okay. it's, uh, I, I'm I'm going back to fiction because I mean I love doing documentary and, yeah. I, and I've always been obsessed with the 1960s, mm-hmm. the, just the sound. Okay, um, yeah, you know, and I can I, see why. I, yeah, because I mean, both my parents yeah, were. Yeah. were uh, huge Beatles fan so uh-huh. that was always playing okay. and then I loved that sound and then the more I sort of dug deeper into that sort of era mm-hmm. I sort of learning about these other musicians and right, I right. was like fascinated yeah. and so um, when I did stand up Dave uh, Barry, uh, we used his song "The Crying Game." Right, of course. In, it, in, yeah. the, in the scene where they dance together. Right. And I spoke to a friend of mine, Harry, who was the first assistant director on Stand Up, and said, "What do we want to do next?" Mm-hmm. And um, I sort of mentioned maybe I want to do a documentary. Okay. But what about? And then so then I realised, well, hang on, I've now got Dave Berry as a bridge into that world. Amazing. Yeah. And I called up Dave. Mm-hmm. And said, I want to do a documentary about you. And he was like, he, I'm, I'm on board. Completely. Wow. Well, what a thing. I just can't, I couldn't believe it because yeah, yeah. I'd actually not heard of Dave Berry, but I knew The Crying Game. Yeah, yeah, sure. Because everyone knows The Crying Game. Yeah. Uh, and and there's a whole I, series I, called that as well. Yeah, yeah. And, I, and there was a film. Yeah, uh, yeah right, okay. Uh, I can't remember who directed it, but oh, it was, was that Miranda the, uh, Richardson about, was in, in it. In the 90s, about the IRA. The IRA. Yeah, 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 yeah sure. Yeah, right, okay. yeah. And there was, yeah. The, um, there was the transgender woman in it and everything, and that was the twist at the end. Right, okay. It was oh, a, I can remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like the very end of the film. Yeah, yeah. I've forgotten and, all about and it. And it turns out she's she's a, a, a man. Right, and, right. Um, yeah, yeah. Fascinating film. So I was aware of that from a very very young age. Okay. And um, I heard the crying because when we were going to shoot stand up, this is just sort of to illustrate how amazing Dave has been. Mm-hmm. Um, when we were about to shoot stand up, there was that scene because we had five days to shoot this at the Avenue. Mm-hmm when we were about to shoot stand up um, the, the dance scene we didn't actually know what song we were going to use and oh, then I heard right. the crying game on Peak FM or something like that oh right yeah. okay yeah, I was yeah. like oh my god that's perfect because it's sort of so melancholy and yeah it's... right okay and um, I, I went on Dave's website and there was a number for um, Marty 
Um, right. And Marty is his his not just his um, manager but his wife as well. She's oh, right. from um, from from Amsterdam, I believe. Okay. Um, and uh, she manages him, and I got in touch, and literally I spoke to her, and she says, "Dave, we'll give you a call in half an hour." And I was like, "Oh, Whoa, he, he's in amazing. a hotel at the moment." Amazing. In, um, I don't know where it was, but it was in a hotel, and I just thought this is like a step up for me. Okay. Because like I'm nobody, and this is like Dave Berry, and 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 that's awesome. Yeah, man. and that's so really cool for me. Excellent. Everything well has done. just sort of panned out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing, amazing. I love that. Oh, so we'll just cut that. Yeah, no. we'll leave that in. Leave there. it in. Yeah. yeah, okay. No, everything has panned out for me. <laughs> except, for that. Out, except for that. <laughs> everything has panned out apart from the hand movements. Um, okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah no, just everything. Right, I'm animating all this. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's, that's fantastic, man. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Cool. So, so yeah, stand up. Let's, let's just go back to that for a minute. So, I mean, yeah. I've, 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 made, I've made some notes. Here. Some notes. Yeah, yeah. So, so Critiquing. Because cause you, cause you wrote that completely yourself, didn't you? Yeah. And I'm, yeah. I'm very impressed, man. Re- like, Thank you. Like, yeah, very, very Thank much you. so. Thank you. Um, okay. We, well, we got, we got nominated for, we, were, we got, um, we were the official selection at Pinewood. Were you? Yeah, That's last year we were part of the official selection of Pinewood Studios. Lift good off going. first time filmmakers. That. Yeah, That's so well so, done. Because you, you get to a point when you make something, I think, and you kind of become numb to what works and what doesn't. So when yes. something like that happens, okay. you agree, think, yeah. okay, I've done okay. Okay. So I'm so glad you liked it. Good I'm stuff. So glad you, you yeah, know, yeah, absolutely. So, 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 some a yeah. few a few phrases that uh, that stood out for me. Happy slappy velvet box bitch. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I had um, to get that down, man. That's well, like, you know, where you, did that come from? If you Google a man called Dan Pena, okay. P-E-N-A, he's a. I've um, heard of him. Yeah, I, I know exactly who a, he is. A motivational speaker. He's on there with the London Real. Isn't well, he, with... you explain like a bit about Dan Pena because this guy. I don't know. I don't know enough about him. I just yeah. know um, him and Brian Rose from London Real went up to a Scottish castle and had this big thing um but i've not i've not watched all of that so but yeah he's um he's incredibly rich isn't he he's massively rich yeah he's also massively arrogant yeah massive, but, oh yeah yeah but but i um i basically sorry about this but i'm ripped out the uh, i ripped off his oh, okay his speech there because i was i was watching this thing and there were all these young sort of like wannabe business magnates right. okay in the room and i was mm-hmm. watching him give them this you know he was he was like he was giving them all this slate okay but they couldn't fight back because they needed him right and i love that dynamic right. okay. of of being reliant upon someone that you um, almost resent okay. so um yeah, um, happy slappy velvet box bitch was an adapt. It was adapted very loosely from <laughs> from something he said, what and I felt it just worked. What a put down! What a, yeah. Well, yeah. it is a put down. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's great yeah. Good stuff, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. excellent. Yeah, I, I like I like the. Um, I mean, he's very insightful. Um, you know, it, there's there's, I mean, the, there is the cliche of the wasted life in there, but I mean, mm. I know you. You know, I, I know you. You know what you're doing there. You know you you you, you talk, you're alluding to the persistence and the hunger um, of an artist. You know, and, and is that you, with Nancy Lipman you, or p- yes, with, with Fionn was it? Fionn, yeah. And, and pissing your life away, um, and like, who fucked me up? Is it is it was it my mum or was it you, you know who are you going to blame? Yeah, you know, and who I've, do you blame but yourself? Yeah, it's like, yeah, yeah, exactly. And and I mean, it is a cliche, but you know, maybe I'm a cliche because I've uh, you know. I've I've gone through this journey myself, you know, yeah. and very much you know, actually doing this now is kind of going through that sort of that whole journey myself, and and it's the fear, it's the imposter syndrome, you know. There's yeah, that's yeah. very much a thing, um, you know. Can I actually do this? And, and it's the fear. Um, I've got these these books here, you know. It's like um, art and fear, you know. It, it, again, cliches and, and the war of art. Yeah, you know, and and I've I've researched these a lot because at the end of the day, you just not got to give a shit, have you? Yeah, there is that. I think the thing with Nancy Lipman as a character, and then uh-huh. and then the three spinners is that she kind of sees herself in them, um, yeah, okay. and sees a certain I don't know drive and like a passion, and and there's a an element there I think of almost 
resenting them for that because she could have been because i've worked jobs before i've worked jobs like in convenience stores where the people i was working with were and this was like um before i made stand up mm -hmm. and and so somewhat of an inspiration but people there who i work with who are a, a lot older than me but had stayed in retail their whole life yeah and saw me as this young yeah guy who had all this uh, all these ideas yeah and saw it as a threat and used that against me and yeah and so I just thought it was an interesting dynamic and to have because you've got Rose who's the obviously the stand in sure um, because the third spinner just went off and did something really big yeah, and, right. and the other two are really resentful okay, and yeah, this yeah. new girl they've got to put down for their own good yeah you know? they've got to put it, down I mean humans we're, we're weird and, they you know, are yeah. yeah we are yeah, yeah, and, yeah, and there are these weird sort of dynamics I think especially amongst um, not just um, young women but also in, in the, uh, showbiz yeah yeah completely. because it's all about who's Who's in the who's in the spotlight? Yeah, especially when you're in a trio. Uh huh. Absolutely. It's like you know, and Nancy Lippman's this this thing. This is this this overarching sort of like demon that sort of I, I suppose just sort of takes control of the matter and mm -hmm. sort of gives them this insight. That right. They need. Right. Okay. Um, but but it it begs the question like you know do to to what extent does great success come and and with 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 any art form it's all about because. Mm -hmm. um, it, art's a weird one, isn't it? Because, like, I mean, obviously, you've got all the different branches. You've got, like, paintings, film, television, music. Yeah. All of them. At the end of the day, it's something that you create to show other people. Yes. And to, to get a reaction. And you're exposing your soul, you know? So, and yeah. That, and that is, that is the very essence of it, you know? You are yeah. exposing your soul for criticism aren't you yeah and then and then when the, I used to have a real problem with criticism I still do have a problem with criticism yeah. I think I think naturally everyone does but some people are better at you, suppressing yeah, that yeah, okay. you know that sort of like well, I don't give a shit anymore which is why I've gone for this yeah but that's the but big that's, that's so that's healthy big, yeah, yeah well, that's so healthy and I wish I'd done it 20 years ago yeah but, but then again <laughs> I had, had a few, few. <laughs> yeah exactly you know? but but you know not yeah. yeah I just wish I'd have gone for it a little bit before really sure but then that wouldn't have made I'm a big me believer know. in that in that everything happens for a reason yeah, and this yeah. is this is you doing this whole podcast now and doing this whole thing about Chesterfield is uh -huh. happening now and that's that's what it's meant to be yeah you absolutely. know just like just like I'm I'm here sat with you talking to you, you know, uh -huh. it's all meant to be and it's all and it is all driven by fear and, and the idea of you know this could either go really badly or yeah. really well but either way I don't give a shit yeah because you've at least got to put yourself out there you really have yeah and um, yeah. you know another, another thing I mean because I've been researching this for you know six months um, yeah. and in, and it's it's about the sort of like a the mindset as well and you know it's you, you've just got, really got to put yourself out there and, and and just get going yeah you know you yeah. can't think oh I, need, I haven't got this equipment now, I haven't got this you start yeah. on an iPhone just start and learn as you go because yeah. you know your journey will be documented you know that's yeah. that's the whole thing well before I had it's, a camera it's the learning curve I'm sure will be a lot more I'll be a lot more slick I'll have oh, a lot sure. more things on my desk yeah, um, I'll have, I'll have. Yeah, <laughs> It'll just be a pile eventually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's just like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, but, before I had a camera, I was doing shows for my family. Yeah, cool. I was making little plays. Fantastic. Because at the end of the day, I think it all boils down to wanting to sort of um, present yourself to people yeah. and to sort of like create something uh -huh. and sort of not almost in a way not to be yourself. And uh, so way, I, used, yeah. yeah, I used to sort of do yeah. a lot of shows. I get that. Um, before I had a camera, mate, you've you've got so much in front of you. So, yeah, 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 I suppose so. It's, I, I do often feel like I was maybe born a lot later than I should have been. Because right. a lot, I think a lot of my influences so far and um, interests are kind of quite deeply set in 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 a, a time way before I was born. Okay. You know, I, was, I was, I'm a millennium child. I was right, born right. in 2000. Wow, right, yeah, wow. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so it's great. I, it so pisses me off as well. It's like, um, nowadays, I mean, Damien Chazelle, who is one of my all time favorite directors, did a film called Whiplash. Okay. And I think he's like late 20s, early 30s. And he did right. Whiplash and won an Oscar. Uh, did he? Oh no, J.K. Simmons won an Oscar okay. for that. Uh, I've got to tell you about, I love Whiplash. Yeah, okay. Um, but people are saying, young director. I'm like, I'm sorry, but you're halfway to 60. That's is not that, young. Is that the drumming one? Yeah, Whiplash. Oh yeah, I've seen that. Oh, yeah. what a film. What a film. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Miles Teller, J.K. Simmons. Mm -hmm. And it's this, it's literally could be a film made on like, Ten dollars. Yeah, uh, uh, it's all. But the, what in color? Color wise, it's amazing. Lots of really deep oranges and greens. And it's sickly and it's okay. really sort of like bitter. And it, first time you watch that film, first time I saw it, I've never watched a film, 
and felt like that because right, I was right, okay. I was sat there I was watching it and I couldn't take my eyes off of it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? You get well, that feeling where it's just... incredibly talented. Um, I mean, you know, actors, but but just in, in, incredibly talented musicians as well. Oh, incredible! And drummers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> drummers too. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, I remember watching the just the the cinematography in that film. Man, it was like you know um, the last scene where he like knocks it out of the park and he finally stands up to to his the instructor J.K. Simmons. I can't remember. I can just, just amazing. Oh, yes, his solo. instructor. His yeah. instructor came in the bar at one point yeah yeah yeah. yeah. and they have that conversation he says I want you to come you know right right uh, okay it's yeah um and uh, just the cinematography, the camera sweeping around the musicians. Yeah, yeah. If I didn't have a love for jazz before that film, I definitely did. Okay, after. right, it right. Was, yeah, amazing. Man. Yeah, it was so good. That so reminded good. me. That relationship reminded me of um, he. Have you, have you seen Full Metal Jacket? Yeah, yeah, Kubrick. Like, yeah, yeah. Do you, do you know what I mean with the with that relationship with the um, with the instructor? Um, yeah, it's it's like a very much. Well, you know, bullying really, isn't it? So it is, and, it, and it, it begs the question. You know, t- to what. Um, end, you know, like why, you know, how is greatness achieved? Yeah, yeah, it's know. a bit of a power trip, isn't it? In, yeah, in some, and, in some ways. and is it important to tough have love? that tough love? Exactly, yeah. is it important? Mm-hmm. Stand up um, was like, okay. oh my god, like you know, Nancy Lippman, the dance instructor, yeah, the, right, the okay. coach, like um, those scenes were, my god, uh, the, the yeah, the, the sound on that was a little bit dodgy because we were in, um, you know, the avenue down on Beatwell Street, yeah, sure, right, yeah, great okay. place. Let's 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 talk about stand up. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you know, this is this is about why we're here. I mean, mate, there's so much to talk about. Obviously, it's like the whole setting up of the podcast and everything. But um, but yeah, it's about you. So so yeah, so okay, stand up, yeah. Mrs. Thistlethwaite. Mrs. Oh my God, yeah. So Mrs. Thistlethwaite uh, is a thistle sifter. <laughs> that, yeah, try saying that several times. Well, and not that's kick well, off. well, they did. That, that, was well, they, the whole, that yeah. was the whole thing. When I was um, so Fionn Naismith, who is who plays Nancy Lippman, okay, used to be my drama teacher. Oh right, right, okay. And one of and, at Chester and, College. No, no, uh, this was where way, but she's an incredible woman. She, I did. Um, it was the Risk Regional Youth Shakespeare Company. Wow, right, and, okay. and we did unedited Shakespeare, right. and we were like ten, nine, ten, Amazing. eleven years old. Right. And people used to come to me saying, "Like, how the hell do they get kids to do Shakespeare?" Okay, oh, well, it's it's Fiona, Fion, and and um, incredible, yeah. And and she, one of the warm ups was tongue twisters. So at the start Amazing. of everything, so there'd be that one. Unique New York was another one. Okay, and um, people always go with like things like red lorry, yellow lorry, but that's actually can be quite simple. But when you you rolled that off pretty quick as well. There you go, I'm yeah. a, uh, acting boy. I just want to be an actor. Um, oh, do you? Yeah, so, I did. Oh, I did want to. Okay, um, not anymore. No, I, I, I kind of, I, um, I did a couple of roles in things. There's a film on Netflix at the moment called um, Outlawed. Okay. We shot in Nottingham, and I was in that. I oh, played right. the um, the main character as a kid in the flashback scenes. Right, right. And then I was in Utopia on Channel Four. Okay. Which was this like enigmatic crime thriller thing. I was just an extra. This right. Is, there was a, really got a lot of backlash actually, but there was um, a school shooting scene. Okay. So I was in that as one oh, of the wow. kids. I, I was right. like 12, 11, 12. Oh, um, but I was right. really. I, I. I mean, even now, I will constantly look five years younger than I am. Right. And back then, I looked really sweet and young. You know, I wasn't like most twelve-year-olds now. You know, right. kind of just start a puberty. I was this sweet little kid, and they thought, okay, he'd look good on the floor. Right, so, right. Yeah, right, right, right. you know, it was. I, I took it because it was great. We shot that down in Liverpool. Uh-huh. Um, so yeah, I did want to be an actor, and and I think that came out of doing drama with with Fionn. Um, right. And one of the tongue twisters that we used to do was Mrs. Thistlethwaite is the Thistle Sifter. And it goes on and on and on. Okay. And, I, and I thought um, that would, I don't know, I was writing that. Because originally stand up wasn't about like a, it wasn't about a comedian. Right, okay. It was about, um, and there wasn't, the, it was it was about an actor. And I can't remember who the other role was, but it wasn't a woman. It wasn't a woman. Okay, have you based it on something in real life or? Um, no, Daniel Lawrence like... is like me, kind of, uh, in a way, oh, right. slightly, in in the kind of, um, he's a bit of a self-pitying arsehole sometimes. There's, there's, there's some very wise 
comments in there actually I've got to say it's a very very impressive I mean you, you know yeah. you've got you've got a, you've got a sort of um, so this is on Amazon Prime isn't at the it? moment yeah, yeah it's so, on Amazon Prime um, so so check it out on Amazon Prime and um, yeah <laughs> yeah I think <laughs> it's yeah it's yeah. no it's fantastic uh, I mean it's about 45 minutes long 40 minutes yeah it's yeah, 45 minutes long something yeah. like that yeah okay yeah so, so simple but you I mean you watch it it's one of those things you've got to watch I mean technically there is some you know I mean because we shot this on zero budget uh-huh. if well it was two quid because um, if you watch <laughs> two when, quid two quid yeah because, a packet of fags yeah yeah, yeah but, right. but they weren't real fags it was just like herbs that we got off of Amazon I wondered about that because there was she was smoking inside was, is that Fionn yeah that's yeah, Fionn yeah. Yeah, yeah okay so she was she was smoking inside I wondered what um, Paul Birch who, who owns the avenue I wondered what you know how you well, did that well we couldn't smoke in the dressing rooms okay but we could actually legally smoke in the big open area with the dance floor and the stage because it was so open right right and, okay um, the fire alarm yeah, I thought were... it might be alright actually it's, it's a huge space isn't it yeah you know? well in in Hollywood they can't actually smoke tobacco anyway on sets you right. do have to smoke herbs right right, right. you can't just okay. smoke cigarettes um Mm. So I just got these herbs off of Amazon and stuffed the cigarettes. Did you? Me. Yeah, yeah. So oh, that wow. was our budget, basically. <laughs> that was our budget was the cigarettes that she... Because there something, there's something about that. She was kind of based as well off of um, Fran Leibowitz, who's... She wrote um, Social Studies and Metropolitan Life okay, in New those. York in the 70s. She was she worked under Andy Warhol. Right. And, oh, right. Um, and she was like 20. Okay, right. And, right. and she was quite, yeah, she was young and she started start writing books. She's a witty woman. Okay. And she smokes like a chimney. Right. So I yeah, thought, yeah. Okay. I, you know, I've, I, I've got to write that into something somehow. Okay. So cool. there was that element to it, yeah. Okay. Um, that was cool. Yeah. I can't remember and, where we were now. And it's but, a, well, we're just, we're just talking about stand up. Yeah. Start. Yeah. Start. Yeah. Yeah. Just, just, you know, give, give them everything. I mean, you've got to watch it. In fact, let's, let's cut to a scene now. Might I take a look at your script? By all means. Thank you. See what we've got here. Oh, no, no, no. This will never do. Look, would it cause you too many technical problems if you were to change the wording of Daniel's introduction? Daniel? Daniel Lawrence, the comedian. I'm his manager, Helen Danes. Ah, my apologies. Silly me. Freddy. Um, is that too much to ask? No, certainly not. Um, what seems to be the problem then? It's not a problem as such, but it's, it's this bit here. We'd like to avoid any mention of the untoward incident. Oh, I see. You're, uh, you're referring... There we go. <laughs> yeah, brilliant. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so that then... Um, uh -huh. So the, the, that was like scene three. Uh -huh. um, the, uh, the third scene, I know it well because it's my favorite scene when she speaks to the announcer, um, Jeanette, um, yeah. Jeanette Barnes. Like she's, oh, she's a goddess. She's amazing. All right. Um, yeah. Um, the scene where she, because um, this is Daniel, it, you haven't seen the film. You probably haven't. Um, it's, it's about a comedian making his comeback mm -hmm. and uh, in a cabaret show. And it's like this sort of, crap sort of really low budget the acts there are sort of all faded and gone away yeah. no one knows who they are mm -hmm. or they're up and coming and it's the only thing they could get uh -huh. and this is Daniel Lawrence who was a big guy it's a, it's a big return for him isn't yeah, it yeah yeah he his backstory is he had a, a, a bit of a breakdown on on his show Saturday Stand Up yeah. we don't know exactly well it's it. we allude to that don't you allude to that yeah, uh, yeah. It's, it's not exact, but you know it's quite a big deal what happened, and it, yeah. it kind of yeah. almost destroyed him. Yeah, and I think I think that's the, the point. And then he's he's in sort of he's isolated for like I think it's a decade, and, yeah, and yeah. then he makes his comeback. And the the thing is, is that um, uh, Helen Danes, his uh, manager, uh -huh. uh, who used to manage him back in the days, sort okay. of convinced her to come back on board and help yeah. him back up. Okay, she's like a mother figure and a wife. She's like this sort of thing in a way. Yeah, she's, yeah, I get that. she's neither. Okay. Um, but yeah, in, yeah. in the way that sort of like, I mean, I don't. Uh, my mum's always giving me that sort of like um, tough love, which is is what is needed. Okay, I think, you know, not not tough love as in like really harsh, but there's that sort of like. You know, um, it's not all of a dovey. It's it's like a no, you know, no. You've got come to on, really stand up for yourself. Stand up yeah, for yourself, yeah, exactly. Yeah, 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 and um, yeah. and I think uh, you know, men are nothing without women, and 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 so I kind of 
I like I say in the original, there wasn't a, it was two men, and so I thought, well, not only should um, his manager be a woman, but also of an older, older, and, and a lot sort of smaller in frame, but fierier with with yeah, how she right, okay. conducts herself and, and manages him. But she was still there at the side of the stage, like. Yeah, yeah. On, and, well, because end, she knew you know, he wasn't going to turn around. Yeah, yeah. And okay. and and he knew, you know. And it's that that recognition of yeah. like, you know, that is a direct. If you, um, in the end of the film, he he goes on. Um, and do you want to spoil it for anyone, or do you want to get him to watch it? I'll, I, it's it's one of those things. It's like forty five minutes long. It's what it's it's more you of an experience. It. Yeah. You should watch it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but the end is directly influenced by Whiplash. That's all I should say. Uh, you know okay, that type of thing. Okay. Uh -huh. um, and. Um, yeah, so um, she, yeah, that scene where where the announcer is sort of like chatting about that uh, he's he's planning the the intro, you know, and then ladies and gentlemen, now we've got Daniel Lawrence. Okay, and and she realizes that in his script he mentions that he broke down. This is his comeback, and, yeah, yeah, and she knows that a that would be really sort of like uh, demeaning to him. So mm -hmm. it's, um, the, yeah, I mean, he doesn't want to hear that just before he goes on. Yeah, right? exactly. So, yeah, and you know. and she wants to, and this this uh, show is anything but a comeback. So it's that mm -hmm. scene, that sort of like um, conversation between them, where she's getting him to adjust the script. And yeah, it's yeah. basically her words, word for word, and she goes, "Wonderful, fantastic." She played it so well. <laughs> she played it so well. Yes, I did like her performance. In oh, that, she was uh, so good. Very much so. Yeah, she was so good. I think she was the most convincing of, of all of them, actually. So mm. yeah, very, very good indeed. She, so. She's yeah. Yeah, she's theatrical mainly. She's right, theater. right. Okay. Um, but yeah. she she did films. She was in The Borrowers, I think. In um... I I seem to recognise her face. Yeah, so she, really, she's, she's one of those so. that I just like. You know, um, Steve Dalton was great as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, who played Daniel Lawrence? Yeah, like, yeah, the lead guy. Yeah. Oh mm -hmm. my god. Yeah, he. I mean, he's big on the sort of like indie film scene. Right. He did a film okay. called Hell Riser. Okay. It was a strange sort of film, um, but but um, I thought, but yeah, I, I knew him through. I did a show in um, uh, Barrow Hill. Did you? Right, yeah, okay. yeah. Right. There was a show called Down Bar the Line. Barrow Hill. Barrow Hill. Barrow Hill. Yeah, yeah. Barrow Hill. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, at the Roundhouse with all okay. the trains. Yeah, yeah, fantastic. Down the Line. And Steve was, um, we were all amateurs, and then they had like five serious actors. Okay. And Steve was one of them. And I told myself, I have to work with every one of those at some point. Wow. And two of them, actually, one was the announcer that was in stand-up and right. the other one yeah, is yeah. Steve. And I, I've worked with all of them now. Uh, oh, you know, because stuff. they're so good. Yeah, you yeah, know. yeah, fantastic. Yeah. yeah so. Oh, good for you, man. Excellent. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you, so you're doing that thing with um, Fionn, uh, with the Shakespeare stuff. Yeah. At, at the age yeah. of 10? Nine. Uh, wow. Uh, yeah, I was nine. You didn't Shakespeare at nine? Well, weirdly, um, I think I, I was actually because um, the, the way that Risk used to work was um, uh -huh. in the spring we'd do we'd write our own plays yeah yeah which was amazing for me to, to learn about sort of like writing <laughs> fiction okay or, or adapting fact to fiction or whatever and then in the summer we'd do Shakespeare and then in the winter we'd do a Christmas show and it'd be musical right so they'd okay. have me singing look be a lady or um, oh what a circus uh, but in right. Latin so it was crazy and it was such an education for me Great. but yeah I'd, I'd, I'd sometimes feel like I don't give her the credit because I'm still friends with with um, my best mate is her son Ether. okay yeah yeah hi Ether and he's like the cleverest guy I know he's amazing cool. and um, she's she's just wonderful and yeah so she got us doing all that kind of stuff mm -hmm. um, and I think I was about because I my birthday is the 15th of December I think I would have been eight when I started actually wow. I turned yeah I turned nine just before we did that Christmas show and then the, the new year started and, and I was new to the whole thing because the first thing I did was a Christmas show and I did Who Will Buy that's what I sung oh yeah and I did that with a girl called Lottie Blue Water okay what lovely, a name a great name great yeah, name yeah. lovely girl lovely girl uh -huh. and um yeah and, and we did that and then um yeah Shakespeare and all that kind of stuff I suppose um so you completely au fait with all Shakespeare's works not all of them. Okay. Um, but before, I mean, they've been going a couple of years before I joined. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, I joined because my friend Patrick. I didn't. I haven't spoken to him in a while actually, but he um, he used to go and said, "Oh, you should come along." So I did. Um, and the, so they, I think they did Midsummer Night's Dream, which right. I love. I've, I mean, I've got that at home. Right. Yeah. Book, and I read that. I love Midsummer Night's Dream. Yeah. Great. Um, I'm trying to adapt that into something at the moment. And um, so 
there's that and the I did Taming of the Shrew and Julius Caesar amazing right so Julius Caesar as Marcus Cato and I got to say bastard and, <laughs> and that was amazing because not only we did three shows we did two at night and the matinee which yeah, is yeah, yeah. afternoon basically okay. uh-huh. and uh, I got to go on stage with two daggers and say um, what bastard doth not <laughs> I am Marcus Cato excellent um, excellent yeah so I, I felt very empowered by that excellent um, cool cool and where was that based that was Nottingham. Oh, that was Nottingham. That yeah, was Nottingham. Yeah. Okay, um, okay. yeah. Uh-huh. Although I've, I suppose I've always sort of like dabbling in that because to to bring it back to Chesterfield, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, Pomegranate Youth Theatre. I was with okay. them for maybe a year. Right, um, right, yeah. You know, um, it, really good. I mean, that's, a, ca- that's a great old building, isn't it? Uh, Rose Theatre. Well, the, the, the oh the pomegranate no the pomegranate the, itself. Oh, the actual pomegranate. I performed there with them, but yeah, yeah, yeah. great building. Uh-huh. I wanted to shoot stand up at Pomegranate. Right, yeah. But it's yeah. really hard okay. because it's about £1,000 a day to rent. Is it? I don't know what it is, but it was a, it was a lot. Because I, I spoke to Carol, who runs the Pomegranate Youth Theatre, okay. and she's like amazing. Yeah, um, yeah. Her husband is um, Whiskey Bob Shaker. Right, okay. Yeah. Bob Lockwood. Of course, yeah, 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 yeah. Whiskey Bob. Yeah, yeah, yeah so yeah. she does drama, he does music. I mean, he's he's just so good. He's great, he's, isn't he? I love Yeah, him. he does I stuff at, uh, uh, at Chatsworth, doesn't he? Oh, God, yeah. everything. Everything, and, and, and yeah. she and, uh, and she does stuff as well, which he plays... I think she Amazing. played Mrs. Havisham maybe yeah, yeah. so when, so when, get, when uh, tourists and visitors uh, visit yeah, Ch- yeah. Chatsworth House they're all dressed up in, yeah, in, yeah, in yeah. role aren't they yeah it's so good it's yeah, so cool. good okay. um, yeah so uh, I lost my train of thought now <laughs> talking about your, your journey your journey yeah really, yeah, yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, so oh, pomegranate. Yeah, it's it's quite a, a lot to rent and stuff, and it's a great building. Uh, okay. I think we've also not just about like the sort of the culture of the area. We've got some great buildings as well. We have. I mean, the, the winding wheels are nice, old building, wheels, isn't it? Lovely, you yeah. know, it's, it's right got, next to the pomegranate. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, I, I put some shows on there in um, the early noughties. The early noughties. Uh, yeah, so I put, um, I put Dodgy on. Uh, right. You okay. know, the nineties band Dodgy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I think they are still going, and they did actually visit. Um, the Avenue Paul put them on at the Avenue and uh, I went along to that it was pretty cool uh, yeah. and I put the Osric Tentacles on have you oh, heard great. of those guys I haven't there. yeah a proper psychedelic band so wow. yeah and the I got what the Tentacles the, the Osric the Osric Tentacles O-Z-R-I-C yeah they're, they're completely way out and they're a guy called Mick Nicholson who was okay. in the Tuscan Fruit Bats got me into those guys and um, yeah in, in the early 90s they're, great. they're pretty way out man pretty way the out The Avenue so. is a great venue That's a great venue I mean I don't know what's happening with it really I have no clue what's happening with it but Paul uh, I, I spoke to him recently uh-huh. um, fairly recently uh-huh. um, but I think they're doing some work to the building but they've done some, haven't they got a leak coming in or something they've got some sort of thing like yeah. that but so I there's mean, some sort of insurance problem and they can't open again so and that's in the control room I think in the, yeah, have you been in that yeah you, I mean that's crazy yeah I mean, it is when we it? were shooting because we shot stand up completely over five days but okay. over weekends uh-huh. at the avenue right right yeah um, Liam uh, Birch, oh his, his son his yeah. son okay. would just be in the control room and he would uh, you know we'd go to him lovely place huge building it's, I mean, it's, it's massive isn't it yeah I remember yeah. looking for venues because the, the two that I was playing with was Pablo Granite is my first choice yeah. avenue is my second yeah um and the pomegranate would have been good for stand up actually I can see that now. yeah well because oh. it, it was more yeah. it was more of a thing about an actor as opposed to a comedian it was less cabaret and it was more sort of straight theatre right right and in a sort of an aged venue and, and I, I, I think um, you'd have thought I went for it for the for the main room but actually when I was writing stand up I, I was basing it so heavily in the dressing rooms that I had to know yeah, what yeah, they would okay. like the dressing rooms are cool aren't they the dressing rooms are crazy I don't know if they um I've changed it at all, but when I did a show there with the Pomegranate Youth Theatre, okay. um, there was, uh, yeah, just really nice, and they had that little sort of like, um, what do you call it, like a stage speaker, like a tannoy type thing, yeah, yeah, yeah. where you could hear what was going off on the stage, <laughs> and you had the mirrors, and you had the tiny window, uh-huh. and I thought, fucking hell, I would love to, I'd just love to make a film here, yeah, because it's great. Yeah. Okay. Um, luckily, there were photos when I learned that I couldn't shoot there. Mm-hmm. and there were photos of the avenues backstage right right and okay. I love that place they've got like the red wall and yeah, they've got the yeah. lovely carpet and the lights are really fancy yeah yeah and that's uh-huh. just like I mean 
most venues it's and huge isn't you'll it? know doing music it's, it's, be- it's better than any venue in Sheffield yeah, but, but you'll know doing music the dressing rooms are like I mean the, the main attraction is the dance floor where the public are going to see yeah for bands uh-huh. the dressing rooms can sometimes be a little bit they can be yeah, yeah. but they're nice they've got like the fridge in there oh and my god but the avenue is and... like they put I mean Paul's put so much work into he that has, place yeah um, yeah and uh, yeah, I think did you play there with the Wonderwise? We played, we yeah, we played there with the Wonderwise yeah. a few times. Um, we we played there when Mike Reed was there. Um, cool. Another time as well because he was still messing around with it, not messing around, but like kind of um, he, he shaking it up. Really, he didn't know what to do with it, and he, he let sort of like the under 18s in at one point, and then they all had to go, and then the band came on. And we were playing oh, to right. sort of like. 50 people so it wasn't quite right but then yeah then he put the uh, the Happy Mondays on great and we we, well they ended up supporting us because (laughs) because, yeah yeah which is mad yeah the Happy Happy Mondays Mondays supported the Wonder Wives that's amazing it is pretty good yeah so but yeah it it all worked out they they were running way behind with the um, with the sound checks so and it was like look you know you're not going to get a sound check and I actually thought at one point they're going to cancel us you know because people started coming in yeah and it was like gutted you know uh, and then he was like look you just go on afterwards and it's like really okay so That's so, so yeah and then a lot of people still there was still you know a good thousand people there and, and stuff uh, uh, so that's the, 2000 capacity isn't it it's, it's a big I place think, I think I don't know if uh, I'm reading this wrong but it's the biggest venue in it's the Midlands it's the biggest independent um, venue in the UK yeah in the yeah. UK in the, UK. In the whole UK yeah, not yeah. the Midlands yeah. and we have it in Chesterfield the thing is is it still and the going really though anymore? sad thing is yeah. that uh, I mean because it used to be the old DSS building I think uh, the DSS was next door. It was the old top rank, but it was it was right. it was all part of the same complex. It's a huge complex, it's so, massive. So yeah, but you can get through the back way to it somehow. Yeah, um, it's like, it like the TARDIS that place, I yeah, isn't in, it? Yeah, I, yeah. I somehow got hold of Paul and and because uh, he's a busy guy, yeah. and uh, and I went to wreck it. I was like, Christ Almighty, yeah. like, huge stage. And then the dressing rooms were white. I thought, and I actually yeah. rewrote the whole film. Oh, did you? Because of the for place. the venue. Amazing. Because, because Paul, like, oh my God, said, have it for as long as you need. Did it? Any day you right. want. Okay. Uh, as long as Liam can come down and, and sort of supervise, etc. Yeah. And do the lights, because yeah. I don't know lights and stuff, okay. but he does. And, uh, yeah. And the VW is cool, isn't it? The, the VW. Oh, it's just in the middle of the dance floor. Um, well, VW, yeah, I think it changes. Yeah, yeah, it changes so cool. uh, And the positions. bikes on the... Oh, there are bikes. There, there are some mod bikes. Mod bikes. And do you know what oh. they did? A quadrifi- Because I'm friends yeah. with Gary Shale from yeah, yeah, okay. Quadrophenia. Okay, cool. He was there and all the others as well. I went, I went to that. Um, yeah, we got backstage with um Did you with meet Leslie Gary? And, yeah, met Gary. Yeah, Gary's and, um, a wicked guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah fantastic. Yeah, I mean, he's put some great stuff on there. And I don't know if it's been supported enough, but... It, I think there's been problems with teething problems with the booking system. I mean, I don't know if Paul's from, you know, a live music management sort of side of things um, originally. Right. You know, I think he's from sort of um, a security company originally, but he put so much into that place. So yeah, yeah I hope it, I hope it can come back. You know, I do, I do because that was a, that was a great moment when, when we uh, when yeah. we supported the Happy Mondays or they supported us. Yeah, and, and I got to talk to Baz. You know, I mean, yeah. that was um, that Paul put me on the spot there. He was, he was like. Um, yeah, you need to you need to uh, you need to um, uh, interview him for the uh, the actual uh, the club's promo. So, so I was like, oh my god! And we were kind of worried about going on anyway. And, yeah, well, not worried, but nervous. You know, yeah. healthily nervous. Yeah, um, and um, it's like oh, you got to interview Bez. I was like, oh my god! But yeah, he was, he was, but he was really sound. Yeah. He was really cool. Yeah. And I was like, um, was that what's on the um, yes that, on the on the actual YouTube channel on the on. Um, Showtime YouTube. The um... yes, there's me. Yeah, there's me too. Yeah, I got him to wear. Um, not wear. Actually, I asked him to wear it on stage. Yeah. And, and the um, the story there. Yeah. Was so I went to see REM in. Oh, in, cool. Um, Great. In Amazing. Huddersfield in 1995. <laughs> Incredible. And it's really really good gig. Um, and Terrorvision was supporting them. And um, God. Gotten Echo Belly, yeah, and so Echo some so a lot of nineties bands. Anyway, yeah. it was really good. Some great names of bands. In yeah, the 90s. there were. Hell, yeah, Elbow. 
and it's, <laughs> it's like who, who came up with that <laughs> but yeah I mean uh, and, and that was really good I can remember yeah. feeling really jealous because um, some Huddersfield Town fans yeah. had actually got Michael Stark to wear a, a Huddersfield Town top and like I knew I knew um, the Mondays were coming obviously and it's like right I've got to get him to wear a town top on stage uh, anyway he shook it about a bit but because it was blue and I think he's a Man U fan he, he didn't put it on uh, so he was like yeah yeah but it's blue it sounds yeah like, okay so yeah. obviously that's City and you know yeah and stuff. you're not that into football are you uh, no well I just don't see it's like you get a ball around a field it's like I mean come it's on it's beautiful man it's there, a beautiful game there are such better forms of entertainment stand up on Amazon Prime yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah exactly no, but, there, but honestly there's so much and I don't know I mean I feel like if there's I'm, I've actually I work with a charity called the Melodic Caring Project uh, MCP oh man I've heard of them They're that's so good. really good they they yeah t- yeah yeah you go for it yeah yeah um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they they support. Um, the, well, they sorry. They we 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 broadcast um, live concerts to kids all over the world in Amazing. hospitals and adults as well. But people who are sort of um, not doing too well who need that sort of pick me up. Yeah, and sure. music is like the best pick me. Right, right. Like, Amazing. If you've ever been down, I didn't know you were involved this, in that. I've heard. Of, yeah, I've heard so much the, about one it. Of the key crew uh, in, on on melodic. Amazing. Um, yeah. Right. Um, okay. We've done some great gigs and. Um, yeah. Oh no, it's wonderful. No, right. and where, where can people find that? Uh, I think it's the melodiccareproject dot okay. um, But pop it in the description. Yeah, uh, correct yeah, sure. me if I'm wrong. Right, look but, out for that, guys. Um, okay. Obviously, at the moment with COVID and that, we're not doing many gigs. Uh, no, we're not doing any at all. But no, okay. Um, but we've done some great. We've done Jules Holland, and I mean, he's a cool cat. Yeah, yeah, um, just a bit. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, we did. Who else did we do? Oh. Uh, Mark Harmon was there. Mark really? Harmon right. from, from um, Soft Cell, Soft Cell yeah, yeah. Okay. was was doing like he did some big band performance. Wow. I mean he's losing it a bit now, I think. But right, right, okay. <laughs> sorry about that. But <laughs> sorry, Mark. Yeah, yeah, but no. yeah, but yeah. I think, no. I think Mark was a big, a big uh, Leeds connection. I think was he. I don't know if he was from Leeds or he was, he was at uni. But I'm not so, sure. So I know Leeds really well because I lived there for eight years. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, you ever worked up there, by the way? You know, you, know, you work at... We, we, we uh, worked twice at Leeds. Okay. Once at the Victoria Hall and once... I don't know where else the one was. Okay. But um, we worked at the Victoria Hall and they gave us a tour because there used to be there's a prison, there's cells down there. Yeah, there is. Yeah. Um, yeah because, I mean, because we're there for obviously like... These are like 16-hour days. We turn right. up at like maybe uh, 10 o'clock okay. and we're there setting up and the sound checks are like at 4. Right. And then people are through the door at 7.30, we're broadcasting till 10, okay. and then we should go out on the town <laughs> right, like yeah, somehow, yeah. you know. Yeah, great night uh, out in Leeds. Oh, great. And, yeah, yeah. and we did Birmingham as well. Did you? Birmingham right, was amazing. Okay. Birmingham yeah, yeah, and Leeds cool. are two really nice places to go out. Yeah, fantastic. Uh, but but they gave us a tour in at the Victoria Centre in Leeds. Okay, and tell everybody what uh, what you were doing there then. So. Uh, I think in Leeds it was Claire Teal okay. from BBC Radio 2. She's big jazz, lovely right. voice. Right, right. Um... Yeah, I think I think it was Claire Teal then, um, and then in because we've worked with her twice, and then I think it was Jules Holland the other time. Okay. Or he might have been Birmingham. I don't oh, know. Yeah. Right, okay. the, the, one of the best ones for me was um, Manchester Castlefield Bowl. Right. Okay. Castlefield Amazing. Bowl, man. It was the Kooks. Oh uh, right. Yeah, right. Okay. Yeah. And um, so so you you're doing the sound, are you? What, what are I, you, I operate the cameras. Oh, are you doing the filming? So the, okay. the, there's me. There's Harry Bracken. Uh, and um, Eve, Eve's great. Eve Bailey, she's actually yeah, she's a copper right now. She's, all right. she's a police officer. We all do our own things. Yeah, yeah I guess so. which is yeah. amazing. <laughs> and you know, and um, yeah, and then there's Meg as well. Meg's amazing. Okay. And, um, and so we operate cameras and do all sorts of things, really. Um, but we did. I, I think supporting them was the Sherlock's. Right. Okay. They uh, they Sheffield, but oh, they they're Drumfield. Sheffield. They're Sheffield. I right, don't. Okay. I'm not sure. There are weirdly there's some. I mean, Drumfield's like that weird sort of middle ground. Isn't it, isn't it? it? Yeah. You've got you got yeah. Sheffield. Uh, Chesterfield and you've got uh, Drumfield, Drumfield just middle. bordering it yeah, okay. like, but there are some really good people I think I think Def Leppard are from, from Drumfield Def Leppard are. but they say they are from Sheffield you know it's like well, what that's what gonna... I say Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, people okay. say where are you from I say Chesterfield they say where I say just call it Sheffield and they, they know okay oh is that what you do well, oh, <laughs> well, shaky ground, guys. But well, yeah, yeah. well, okay. it depends. I mean, if you 
like Google me I used, to, Chesterfield, I, used but, to, I used to say that at uni it's basically you know I, I went to uni down down in uh, near London in oh, Fulham, so it wasn't London it was High Wycombe but it was just um, northwest of London and and people you know there weren't many northerners there at all so everybody could be like well where are you from you know with the accent yeah. and, and, and actually I had to well I didn't realise I'd changed my accent but people couldn't understand what I was saying they you couldn't know, no maybe my, my accent was so you do have quite um, it's 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 similar to mine because yes, I was going to say yours. Yours isn't a typical Chesterfield accent, is it? No. Oh, um, okay. I, when I went when I was at college, um, it changed a bit because right. I was a, I was around everyone else and I could sort of like you know get some get some like <laughs> it, if, if I want to like it depends like how I'm feeling on the day. Okay. Um, but usually I know I've always I've always kind of spoken quite well yeah. I was going to say you, you, you very s- much, you're very similar you do yeah I'm um, an English teacher as well though so it's probably something to do with that you had an English I well, am you, an English teacher oh you, well yeah yeah, yeah, yeah so yeah, yeah. well um, not practising anymore but you yeah, know, yeah yeah <laughs> qualified qualified to yeah, teach yeah. English okay. uh, yeah yeah, um, yeah. So I, I find accents fascinating and, yeah and absolutely I, they really are they people really always are. used to say when I was like eight they say you speak very well yeah because back then it was even more posh I, I used to pronounce every letter Oh right, okay. And I would pronounce so everything. So probably probably something to do with your acting then, is it? So I would say the fact that I didn't go to school. Um, you didn't. You didn't go to school. No. Oh, you home homeschooled. Uh, barely. <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. No. Right, yeah. Okay. I mean, mum and dad taught me as much as they could. I, yeah. I mean, they could. They're really intelligent, obviously. Yeah, they, absolutely. Yeah. But, I mean, Mike they, and Kaz. Big uh, shout out to Mike and Kaz. I love you. Yeah. But 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 um, I'm a nightmare. <laughs> but, but, um, <laughs> But yeah, um, I was quite difficult. I've always been quite difficult. I'm better now, obviously. Okay. But, right, but right. you know, trying to people trying to teach me things, I would have a problem with. And sure, right, um, okay. Yeah, uh-huh. but I suppose I suppose I was never sort of mixed in with. Right, the right, school okay. Because I wasn't because I wasn't around everyone from the area. Sure. Okay. Um, yeah. So, I, so where's the gap between you, you doing the? Um, um, the, the Shakespeare stuff in Nottingham and that and then um, you, you journey through to what you're doing now well the sh- risk uh, was the Shakespeare stuff was um, was actually a group for home educated kids oh right uh, not not exclusively because there were some people there who were in school but okay. but the lessons were planned out so that it would be in school time and stuff and actually for me the way I needed to learn it was a better education because um, we didn't know it at the time mm-hmm. but obviously in studying Shakespeare and in writing our own things, we were getting great educations in history yeah, and English. Yeah, very much um, so. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. In fact, Fionn made a point of, of deliberately putting in sort of like GCSE grade type material in there. Right, right. Uh, I mean, I've only got a GCSE in English and like a GCSE grade two in maths. Okay, right, Or right. whatever that is, like a G or something, you know. Okay. Um, but, <laughs> so I've never been academic. And I think I first picked up a camera when I was maybe like six, okay. maybe six years old. Um, and it was, I think the first camera I had was one of those old DV tape yeah, yeah, okay. camcorders yeah, yeah, um, I had one of those. from like yeah. the very early noughties. Okay, yeah, yeah, we just had <laughs> in the early the, noughties, yeah. yeah, I did, yeah. Yeah, yeah, great stuff. Yeah. Uh, and, and you had like maybe 60 minutes on there. Uh-huh. And and you uh, and the good thing about this, it didn't burn onto the DV, but you could overwrite things. Yes, you could. So yeah. I'd have these tapes. Right, And okay. I'd be making these short films that, because uh, I used to be obsessed with like um, horror films. Right, okay. So I'd be making like my cheap rip-offs of Nightmare on Elm Street. Fantastic. And like, you know, um, uh, Friday so, the 13th and all these slashes yeah. so and you made your own um, horror film didn't you, you very short one um, Sykes yeah that was out, that not cool. too long ago That's should, still should have a quick there. look at, at Sykes now yeah play a little clip so Tom why do you think I've asked you to come and talk to me today because it's the thing with Charlie I'm sorry nothing what happened with Charlie Tom Right, okay. I believe this belongs to you. Do you want to start by telling me what this is? Sykes. Sorry? His name's Sykes. He lives here. And who is he? I don't know. Tom, you're big enough now to not have imaginary friends. He's real. You know when I said there was like five actors in down the line yeah. in that show, 
uh-huh. Barrel. Um, Barrel. That I want to speak to. Um, Donna Booth was one of them. Okay. Uh, I don't. She's not really an actor by trade, like Steve Dalton, for example. Yeah, yeah. But she she can act. And um, this was after I just started college, and West Studios. Okay, on Sheffield Road. Yeah. Um, okay. Yes, near- I know what you mean at the top of St Helena's, at the top, just above, right at the top of. Um, Sheffield Road, right at the top of Sheffield Road, yeah, yeah, like yeah, I know just you as you're coming into town, it's okay. a car wash. I've always wondered and about you've that got place. The donut car park. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, that place used to be an all boys school, and I didn't know this when I was writing this film. It's okay. like ten minutes long. Right. It's called Sykes. It's just about. It's on YouTube. Um, uh, made it on like zero budget on like a little Canon camera. Yeah. And I got Donna to be this teacher and this this this, this haunted pupil and that yeah. kind of thing. And it was quite demonic. gripping in places. And yeah, like, we shot that on. It was my first. Um, go with like a um, with a with a steady cam and having okay. a kit and having yeah, yeah. a store full of stuff right. because I mean I started out with just a camera okay and I see far too many people now that start out with everything yeah well yeah all the gear all the gear no, no idea, idea. Yeah. it's yeah. my favourite term <laughs> okay because it's so applicable to so many people like I was in college with yeah, or, yeah, okay. or people that were yeah. trying to make films right now uh-huh. it's so important to just start with nothing because yeah, right. you kind of learn the Start with, ca- start with a camera. I mean, iPhones or, or you know, Android phones. Yeah. Are just Although I'd never shoot a film on that. I'd rather. Yeah. Sh- I would rather shoot a film at, at four eighty. Okay. Um, you know, oh, tiny right. resolution on a camcorder than at ten eighty on a phone because yeah. it's just so, it's morally incorrect for me. Right. Like, right. You know, okay. You know, I get that. People yeah. say like you know you can shoot a whole film on an iPhone. Mm-hmm. Nah. Like. There's something about a camera which is so important. Yes, there is. Yeah, um, something sort of um, so, sentimental. Sort of sentimental and for me. Just, yeah, and it's, it's different um, for a lot of people because I know there was that. Um, I th- he, he was Asian. I don't know where from, but he was a filmmaker and he made a whole film on an iPhone. And there's a big thing about it. Oh right. Was it yeah. Ang Lee? Okay. Maybe not. I don't um, know. But he, he made a whole. It film. might have been Ang Lee actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and and a, a friend of mine, um, Benny from um, from Leeds, who, who was in a band called the Little Black Hearts. That was one of the first um, videos to be made all on iPhone as oh, well. Oh sure. And they were sponsored by iPhone in the end. Uh, they get they got some sort of sponsorship or at least some recommendations in it yeah. and it got a bit further but yeah they were a great band as well amazing but, uh, yeah but yeah I mean you know, just, you've got to start somewhere haven't you you know so you I, mean, do. I mean what advice have you got for, for say young filmmakers coming aspiring yeah. filmmakers coming through I think just um, it's for sure don't I mean I've just never listened to because I can't I feel like this would be a better question to ask me when I'm 75. Okay. <laughs> you know? yeah, and yeah. I can't wait to be 75, by the way. I know so many people oh. that are afraid of aging, but I can't wait to be old and wise. And really? But right now, all I know is that I've I've never taken... In a way, I've never taken no for an answer. When people say that's not going to work, or this, that, or the Great. other. Um, or we're restricted on time. I think, well, fuck it. We're restricted on time then, but we'll do this this way. And okay. we're going to do it my way. Because, I know that sounds arrogant no, as hell. No, not at all. It's but, great to know your mind, mate. It's, but, it's a very, very important thing, I'd say. Yeah. 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 I, I mean, you know, I think it's just so important just to follow you. I mean, David Lynch is one to listen to. Yeah, right, if, right. I know, oh my God, there's so many like student filmmakers that's like, oh, we researched Kubrick and we listened to Paul Thomas Anderson. And yeah, just listen yeah, to yeah. fucking David Lynch for, for two hours. Yeah, listen yeah, to David yeah. Right, right, okay. and you will be enlightened because yeah. um, this is a guy that's completely um, uh, you know uh, aware that he's an arrogant prick but <laughs> but the same but his films work because he doesn't yeah. take no for an answer and he, he, he makes uh, leaps of faith and he experiments you know uh-huh. and there are videos of him on the internet of him um, raging at the crew saying I mean I don't agree with oh, raging at the crew those. but that'd be saying, great yeah it's so good I mean pull one up at some point but it's like um, it was, you know who cares if the scene's long you know I want to do it this way yeah and it's like people He's have a definite this, vision hasn't he well he does yeah. people have this a vision of a director who is mm-hmm. this like short guy who rages on set and he's like got these little glasses and he's you know that kind of thing and he's sort of very controlling mm. and they wouldn't be far wrong right, but you've right, got to okay. be exactly that uh-huh. right, right. because the director at the end of the day is no different from a manager they've got to get things in a certain sure, way and right, the director okay. is the same as you know, uh-huh. yeah. you know how do you think the um, how, do you, how do you feel about the the, the first and the, and the second versions of Twin Peaks um, Twin Peaks for me I mean because I, I, I don't think that's ever been done before when a 
something from I think it was Twin Peaks the eighties. It was the nineties. Nineties, yeah. early nineties, yeah, yeah. very early nineties. Yeah, maybe mid nineties. I can't remember actually. But he was doing films like, like he did Mulholland Drive. Oh, Mulholland Drive was uh, what yeah. a creepy yeah. film. Yeah, yeah, Shit. yeah. yeah. Crazy. I watched that and I was like stoned as hell. And I watched that. You know the bit when he's in um, when he's at that party and the you know the guy. I haven't seen God, that so long. I've not seen it since the nineties. But like, Is it yeah, it, Drive that was, it was way of. out, really way out. There's there's there's, there's two main girls in it as on the. Yeah, yeah. Um, and this oh. is it the bit with the homeless guy in that the, the, oh, the jump scare just actually and it's like, like, yeah, but it's yeah, such a good film yeah. but Twin Peaks and the difference between them um, if I'm right in thinking the recent Twin Peaks uh -huh. was still shot in 4-3 right? um, yeah I think so and didn't didn't his daughter have something quite a lot to do with that is, isn't his yeah, daughter I think quite a big yeah she's yeah, quite sort of up and coming isn't she very much like um Francis Ford Coppola and yes. Kubrick had yeah. what was it Vivian Kubrick was I it I can't remember the names but oh yeah Coppola's um, yeah. daughter was in the, one of the later Godfather movies or something if, like that. if you're watching this and you want to like see a film set yeah. and how it operates watch Vivian Kubrick's documentary on The Shining oh right okay. she did 40 minutes of just following Jack Nicholson around oh, and right. following Kubrick around directing Kubrick uh, Shelley Duvall's hair falling out from stress uh, Kubrick raging at, wow, at, at Shelley Duvall right. and it's all shot by Vivian Kubrick right. and it gives this I mean The Shining is a masterpiece great um, insight into yeah, that I don't give a shit what Stephen King says it's a great film I mean, <laughs> cinematically it's such an amazing thing and this gives you the insight okay. onto how you how you sculpt something like that yeah um, yeah um, but yeah, I mean, going back to we started at Sykes. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah. It's, yeah, it's, but but Sykes. I mean, that for me, that was like the first time that I had my hands on good kit, and I was sixteen. Right, right, okay. And now nineteen, three years ago, not that long ago, <laughs> and I've I've come. I mean, to be fair, you can I've, see the progression, man. It's 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 incredible what you've done. Yeah, I, 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 I'm I'm pretty. I'm scared to think what you you might accomplish. I'm re, I'm really I'm, excited I'm for you. Though. It goes up and up and up. What what I I mean, people would say you know, young filmmaker and stuff. DT, uh -huh. Derbyshire Times looking at you it's like you know they always say like you know young filmmaker yeah, yeah. And it's like well just filmmaker you know anyone yeah, yeah. I mean an eight year old could be a filmmaker if yes, you make a film could. that yeah, yeah. is telling a story it's uh -huh. a, and and young is, is they don't say Steven Spielberg because he's in his been 70s now they never say old, old filmmaker, filmmaker Steven no, Spielberg no they don't no. you know so don't be ageist no um, I guess not so I it's like a, you know um but who who cares? It's all publicity. And it's yeah, great. And okay. I just love working. So, would you say that um, horror is your genre of, uh, of choice, really? Uh, certainly, when I was sort of like ten, mm -hmm. uh, maybe ten, twelve years old, I was watching um, a lot of a lot of horror films. The first ones I used to watch, though, I was obsessed with the seventies. Mm -hmm. Ask me anything about the seventies. Yeah, film. very much so. Sasha, yeah. I mean, seventies um, was that change. Yeah, The Omen. 1976 yeah yeah amazing you know? <laughs> I, I know I, I, I mean um, I used to have this little party trick where people would ask me what year a film came out in yeah, the 70s yeah. and I would yeah, okay. tell them the year right amazing uh, you know um, and I, yeah I think it was something about the um, the really sort of homegrown way of shooting them have okay. you ever seen Last House on the Left no I haven't seen that no that's no. really horrible film oh, okay it's, um, similar right. to Cannibal Holocaust in the way that it's shot it's oh, very uh, low budget right, and really right. hard to watch it's very similar to I Spit on Your Grave which is okay. another horror, horror right, film right right okay. uh, one of those sort of like um, I suppose like uh, um, prov provocative horror films yeah yeah that okay. really sort of dabbled in the concept of um, sex and violence and the relation between them okay uh, as, mm -hmm. you know and it it, it was really just that films back then disturbed you yeah and and that I, really disturbed me the, the the omen and 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 the second and third as well i mean there were so i mean you know i was growing up in the 70s i was like seven or eight years old at the end of the 70s and it's like i could i can remember being scared shitless yeah absolutely you know it really got i've not revisited them actually but, i saw um, the omen but, yeah. I was, I was are they like, still uh, scary yeah uh, and the dogs running through the graveyard and oh yeah you know, when they like, when they do the, gr the grave and it's a dog yeah like, yeah yeah and, and the uh, and the guy who's in the lift and that that sheet of glass oh, cutting glass. his head off yeah yeah when they're in yeah. Rome or somewhere like that and he's got the knife trying to pick them up and yeah he's, yeah, yeah. The, yeah um I mean that film I think if, if anything it wasn't the violence that's disturbing in that it's the it's similar to the exorcist that was three years earlier yeah um it really um it really dabbles in in 
the religious themes yeah, and it, it really does, it yeah. really looks at them in a harsher different light right right because okay. up, up until like the exorcist and that type of thing and uh-huh. I suppose life of Brian in a way if you want to look at it as either, <laughs> people uh, you know um, religion hadn't really been touched upon in film in, right. in, in quite a profound way that The Exorcist did okay. um, and The Omen and that type of thing because it, it was really disturbing and it kind of took it to a different place yeah it really did and, and yeah. I suppose that's and the fact that it was disturbing is probably why I was interested in it as yeah, a young age too, because because the whole reason I watch films back then the whole reason I make films now is to cause a reaction okay great and so watching anything that gave me that sickly feeling at the bottom of my stomach yeah. nothing could do it and like it really horror. did didn't it yeah. yeah and I saw maybe Good Will Hunting when I was 12, 13 yeah. didn't get it and All so right. and so the only films that caused a, re- an, an, a reaction to me was horror and then obviously okay. now when I watch something like Goodwill Hunting which is much more about the, the human side of things uh-huh. and, and people's sort of mind I uh, there's, a, there's a really different outlook and so I think that's why horror was my first okay. love because it was the it was the thing that it caused the most uh Reaction. In okay, me. and obviously yeah. it's it's Mark Kermode's uh, genre of choice, isn't it? You know, Mark Kermode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've always said I will. Uh, I know I've made it. If Mark Kermode reviews my film, he can um, he can pan even, it. Even if he slates it. Even if he slates it, I just want him to 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 review something. Yeah, yeah. Please yeah. slate me. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> slate me, mate. Slate me. <laughs> yeah. Did you see that thing they did? Um, well done, you. Well, um, so so basically, um, I, just, I mean. God, I used to listen to like Radio Five all the time, and he was on there on a Friday afternoon, and I was I used yeah. to listen to it religiously, and, and and still now, I mean, if I've missed something out, you know, I'll I'll sort of like Mark Kermode's review. Isn't it doesn't have to be horror, but obviously, you like there's at least two or three in his top ten always. Yeah, all the time. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, I, I will I would trust him implicitly. His 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 taste and and. He's, his views yeah I mean I, I've never I think I've only ever once disagreed with Mark Kermode and that was when he was talking about Hereditary okay I've not, not heard that Hereditary oh, right. came out in 2018 mm-hmm. and it was um, Tony Collette as um, the uh, a, a mother and a wife and okay. she's she's um, her, her mum dies basically and she was quite estranged right, and, right, okay. um, and it's a supernatural I don't want to spoil it because it's one of those things that yeah, halfway yeah. through the big twist happens uh-huh. and I went to take my dad to see it and he was okay. like horror I once oh my god I once watched Paranormal Activity with, with dad oh yeah yeah I've seen that yeah yeah Christ yeah. Yeah, he was up for days uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, yeah yeah it's crazy and, um, and then I took him to see Midsummer. Uh, not Midsummer. That oh, was Ari Aris. Oh, Midsummer, man. That was yeah. No, but I took to Hereditary, <laughs> but yeah, Midsummer came out after Hereditary. Same director. Yeah, yeah. What a fucking film. Whoa, what a film. What I a was film. watching that like. Uh, this is this is like biblical. I'm getting I'm getting hairs standing yeah. up like talking about Midsummer. Oh, that the, is crazy. Uh, the, the soundtrack yeah. to that freaks me. Out. I can't I can't remember the soundtrack, but just very um, vocal. The, oh yeah, it was yeah, oh yeah, yeah. There's a lot. There's a lot of Swedish stuff in there. Like there a lot of sort of like yeah. Um, yeah. Swedish folk sort of stuff. Yeah, which know. is so weird. To yeah, play yeah, a film, yeah, completely. But it works. Have like, you seen the girls singing to the goats in Sweden? Have you seen that? I've What's seen, it? Um, the one where they. Uh, it's a viral video it's got something like 20 million views and it's, it's her yeah, on a mountain and yeah. she's like singing, she's singing to and the... she heard them or something yeah 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 it's amazing I feel like it's got it's, yeah. it's, got its own name it's, it's absolutely incredible yeah that, yeah you've got, you've got to check that out yeah, yeah watch yeah. Midsummer. Um, yeah <laughs> but yeah that's you know it, whoa I, yeah. I, knew, I knew something weird was going to happen yeah um, and I think that's why we're so like it's humans were so um, attracted to horror because it causes such an emotion. Yeah, and yeah. Al- and and also I think any you get these people who are really prude and say, oh, "I'm not an adrenaline junkie. I do things mm-hmm. by the book." Blah blah blah, uh, and you know, all very well and boring. But uh, but but the thing is, the thing is, uh, horror. Uh, whether we like it or not, we're all adrenaline junkies. Mm-hmm. And when you sit down and watch horror, yeah, yeah. there's something about seeing the um, something horrific yeah, yeah. In, the, in the comfort of, mm. of, a, of a cinema seat yeah okay. that it's just really cathartic yeah yeah absolutely you know yeah. and so when you watch something like Hostel and you see like a drill oh inside, man yeah that was good yeah, you think, yeah Jesus I, I, Christ. I, I, I've not seen the um, the sequels but I've, I've seen the first one they're not worth it not no pr- worth I don't really. think no I, mean, but I, think, it's, I it's, think it was Robert Rodriguez who did Hostel and Tarantino okay. presented it. He produced yeah, it somehow. Yeah, I can't remember. It's a long time since since I saw that. And um, mm. what about um, so? I mean, 
with horror, uh, as, as a lot of filmmaking really, it's, it's what you don't see. So you know, it's the leap of the imagination, which it, is which is, is a yeah. very vital part of filmmaking. You know? Yeah, the best example is Jaws. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. But, but that's also the best example of how no budget works better than yeah. High but the great dialogue on the boat, man. It's really yeah, it's because, a great dialogue. Yeah, because um, it's like the whole reason we don't see the shark is because the budget was so small they couldn't <laughs> afford <laughs> to have this CGI. I mean, there was no CGI really. Back no. Then. No, no, not I really. Mean, no. There was minimal like giant kind of stuff. sort of like, Ooh. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, um, Gulliver's Travels. I had travels nightmares and stuff. about that for, you know, for ages. Yeah. Was like, it, that was early eighties. I can remember the first time it was on TV. It was like, oh my What's god, that Godzilla. Did no, um, no, Jaws. Jaws, yeah, Jaws. Yeah, yeah. Jaws, and Jaws yeah. two and Jaws three were pretty. Jaws oh, Jaws scary. three wasn't quite as good, was it? Jaws. But, that uh, was George. That was Jaws. 3D. Yes, that's um, right. Yeah, they, it wasn't quite as good. Yeah, but all power to them. They bought into that whole early mm. '80s rise of the new effect type yeah, things, and Star course. Wars was guilty of that as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh -huh. So was Friday the Thirteenth to some degree. Friday the Thirteenth, great uh, film. But, but what, about Blair, what about oh, Blair Witch? Blair Witch. Blair yeah. Witch. Yeah. Um, what you didn't see again, and, and all, all, all just on a little camcorder. That was yeah. like ultra low budget, wasn't it? That was low budget. It was. Yeah. It was. Um, Although back then a little camcorder was actually a big camcorder. Yeah, yeah. Shit, you know? <laughs> but but it still it worked. The thing about that was, um, I think it was, I, I want to say Mike was the name of either one of the directors well, I, or one of the actors. Right, I can't remember. But there were two directors uh -huh. and they actually sent them out with no map or anything and they were genuinely scared. Oh really? Oh right, I didn't know that. Right, yeah, okay. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, that was sort of the first... First found footage horror, I right. would say. Yeah, yeah. Um, for sure, nothing had really been been done about that. You know, with that sort of style of kind mm. of you know the shaky camera running through the woods, it's terrifying. Yeah. We've got this. It worked really well because people bought into it, but also the marketing campaign. Yeah, they right, of they made a website for the Blair Witch, okay. and they made this whole backstory. Oh, so that, that would have been one of the first three, websites. Yeah, these yeah, three yeah. student filmmakers went missing in Burkittsville. Right, and, and okay. It happened, and there's nothing to do with the film, but right. they went missing, and they were looking for this thing called the Blair Witch, uh -huh. and then suddenly they started leaking all this footage of what they captured on right, the police. Right, okay. The police had yeah, found very the tapes. clever. Very clever. Really clever. Yeah, really clever. Very much so. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. It's everything marketing. But yeah, um, let's. So so yeah, obviously we had the first episode. Um, what about other people who are coming on? Uh, I've, I've got I've got a list. Yeah, my arm. I've seen your list. It's I extensive. Think, yeah, in fact, did I? Did I send you a picture of it? I I've I went round and anyway. saw your list of that's right yeah, yeah about okay. a million yeah, I've people. Got, I've got some possible good um, guests coming up. You want us to get Neil Anderson um, on the show? Neil Anderson, who wrote the Dirty Stop Outs. Okay, that's that's the one. That's the Aquarius edition, actually. But um, he's uh, he's got the sixties, seventies, eighties, and nineties. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Naughties will soon be in the distant past, won't it? So it's it, scary. scary yeah. It is scary. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for mentioning that. Yeah. 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 But no. but Neil should be coming on. He's a mine of information. And he helps you oh, out with your God. Uh, he, I interviewed Neil for the documentary, and he is like a mine of just of knowledge and passion. Right. Right. Once you get him Very talking passionate. on this show, yeah, uh, he won't shut up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so, so, so yeah. So yeah, Neil on. should be coming on. Um, I want to try and get Bernie Clifton on at some Bernie. point. Bernie. And what about the? Um, in fact, you. We, let's talk about Clear Vinyl. You you um, documented oh, their yeah. fantastic electric show at the Lead Mill in Sheffield. It was electric. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that yeah, the Lead Mill. Yeah, uh, they're just they're a great. Yeah, it's just a great bunch of guys. They're going to go places. They've got the songs. They've got the looks. They've got they've they've, they've got, got quite a lot, yeah. haven't they? Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, um, I I just find them all incredible. Um, yeah, the, the, and shooting in that venue was brilliant. I mean, yeah. um, and they were just so supportive. I suppose. Uh, um, Did you go backstage there, by the way? Yeah, yeah. yeah. They still, still got the light bulbs around the. Uh, they've got everything, and they've still got all the old little neat clippings on the wow. dressing rooms. Like yeah. Arctic Monkeys played there. I played there yeah. in the nineties with my band, The Daisy Age. I'm sure you probably yeah. got a little thing on the wall somewhere. Probably then. Yeah, somewhere. They but haven't I, changed it. I do remember the uh, the light bulbs, and it was like, oh my god, this is proper old school. It's so good, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, yeah, so it was it was great, and mm -hmm. I met I I'd obviously heard of Clear Vinyl because they're like probably the biggest band in Chesterfield at I'd the say moment. so at the moment yeah. Um, yeah I was I was at Chandler's 
Oh, okay. I always go between the vaults and then and then to finish the night off, you know, to round it off with like a few rum and cokes. I love Chandler's. I, love, I, go, Ch- I go Chandler's. Mm-hmm. Um, and I saw John Joe, who is one of the guitarists. Okay. Um, and I was like, oh, are you from Clearby? And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Didn't know who I was, obviously. Oh, right. And, so this uh, is how this came about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great I remember stuff. talking to them. And then they actually they said... Um, I, oh, I got re- <laughs> I got really drunk, and uh, and they, you know they got a piano in Chandler's. Yes, I, I, I do, played yeah. piano for John Joe, and Amazing. he started filming it, and he sent it to. Um, I, it might have been Jackie sent it to first. Okay, um, I Jack don't know. Carver, yeah, yeah, uh-huh. and uh, and uh, they said, "Will you come and do some session stuff with us?" Amazing, and that never happened. But what did happen is they said we're doing a gig for um, obviously for what happened with with the drummer. Okay, yeah, yeah. And, very uh, sad. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. and um, they they said we're doing a show at the Legnall. Will you film it? So yeah, okay. I thought, yeah. It was such an emotional night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was such yeah. an emotional night. Um, Emotions really high there. Yeah, that was that was last November, wasn't it? So. And, yeah, um, yeah, it doesn't yeah. feel that long ago, but it, it was actually. Yeah, it was yeah. that long ago. Yeah. And um, incredible gig. It was incredible because it was like just seeing everyone come together at such an iconic venue mm-hmm. as well, and um, just yeah, it was it was powerful stuff. Yeah, yeah, and and I was on stage filming as well. Okay, so it was great to be. I bet it was to be up there. Wow. Um, Right, and they're just so nice. Yeah, yeah so fantastic. Nice. Right, right. Know. Okay. Yeah. So, so yeah. I mean, what what else do you think is going for Chesterfield at the moment? You know, I mean, I'm, I'm hoping to sort of like really put it in the spotlight, and you know, maybe regain a bit of the pride what, in town again. What's going for Chesterfield is like stuff like this. You yeah. Know, anything okay. that you or I are doing. Okay. Or, any, or even even with um, the magazine, um, you know, Simon Pate. Simon Pate. Yeah, Pate. I know Pate. Pate. Yeah, 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 uh, yeah. Simon Pate, and, and also. Um, so, so is that? S40 local, uh, yeah, or is, yeah, right, yeah. okay, yeah, uh, yeah. Both of them, and there's S41. He's, he's been in, interviewing bands in there and giving them a leg up. He's done, he's done he really well. Me there. for stand up, right? Of course, uh, okay. yeah. And I was like, that was great. Okay, um, I knew Simon because I did NCS. Oh, Simon right, for NCS. okay, yeah, yeah. and so I did that. And then he, mm-hmm. yeah, he gave me an interview for stand up, and um, that was so good. Yeah, I think stuff like that is really important. That's only been going a couple of years as well, and he's he's done really well. And he gets local artists to to actually like um, yeah. do do the front, front and, cover. And those front covers. Have you seen the latest one? No, it's in like it's... a binder. This one, it's like a real because it's been a while since. Oh yeah, of course, right. Okay, uh, I don't know who did the art. Um, but it's really lovely stuff. Right, right, yeah, okay. Um, I know. I've got to get paid on sometime, actually. So yeah, 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 man. yeah. You know, yeah. This, is, this is where it's at. Um, yeah, I, I think I'm going to get Pete Barber. You know, who oh, does yeah, a big um, murals and who stuff. does a big murals up yeah, Chatsworth Did he do Road. the one outside uh, Vintage Tea Rooms? He did. Yeah, he yeah, did that one. He, awesome. He's pretty much done all of them. Um, yeah, but mostly yeah. up Chatsworth Road. Um, I don't know. It's um, there's but, so much. The thing is, yeah. when you look at it, it, there's so many people. There are there are in this so many area. people. Yeah. Yeah, and it needs so, to be celebrated. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, and just reinstill a sense of pride, I think. But yeah. but also Derbyshire as well. I mean, you know, look. So if you just go out ten miles from Matlock, there's Patuawa. Uh, I don't know any of those guys. I, yeah, 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 yeah. They, I think yeah. they would. Do, I think they're pretty gutted because they were meant to be playing Why Not Festival. Oh no, um, that's this, huge! Uh, yeah, band, yeah. Why not? That's they were huge. meant to be playing um, of course, the, the main, the main stage. Yeah, we've got why not. So, so why not is our local festival? You know, out at Pike Hall near um, Buxton, that sort of way. Yeah, we've had Idris um, Elba play there. So, and, <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah we've it's quite big. big. Yeah, it has had some big bands yeah. play there. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I mean, I saw Jamiroquai there a couple of years Did ago. You? Yeah, which was awesome, but it Amazing. got rained off. Oh, yeah, I think the stage was maybe positioned the wrong way, and, and it's basically the sure, sheet, yeah. sheet um, rain into yeah. them um, God, yeah. what about trash yeah I want to get the, the, old, uh, the trash guys on right, um, yeah. I don't think they're together anymore I don't think they're going to get together anymore but they've got something to do with artist liaison okay uh, um, at uh, Why Not Festival as well sure, sure. plus um, there's a guy I don't think he lives in Chesterfield anymore um, but uh, I think he's based in Liverpool and he might have gone to the either Paul McCartney school or maybe something in Huddersfield oh. but Brad Stank um, yeah, he, one of his uh, old videos. Uh, sorry, one of his new videos reminds me very much of Mac DeMarco. Oh, I love Mac DeMarco. Yeah. Oh my God, he's so awesome. Weird. Right, this amazing. guy's awesome, yeah. and he's from town. Yeah. Right, yeah. and I've got to get him on. But but now, <laughs> yeah, it's the sky's the limit, really. So oh, it really is. I'm I'm all open to ideas. If anyone's got any ideas of of what which direction I should pursue or whatever. 
Um, yeah, just just bring it to me. Let's do it. Let's reinstill a bit of um, pride in town and the county again. Oh god, yeah. Yeah, so it's so Patuwal, I would say. Yeah, they've um, they've done really well as well. Uh, I think they've got an album out later this year. I put them on at the avenue. Um, I, oh right. I rejigged um, an old club night I used to promote called D Tune, which oh, cool. was which was D-tune just um, rings a bell. Yeah, yeah. It was it was like deep house sort of stuff. Yeah, and, yeah. Um, some guys called Rhythm Plate who I used to work with at Matlock County Offices when I w- worked there nearly twenty years ago, and they got a niche record deal which was really good, and they're very very well respected and, and basically yeah. just. I mean, I just work with them in the next office, but through association with them and just kind of knowing what to do a bit, um, a lot of the uh, really good uh, underground house um, producers yeah. wanted to come and play Chesterfield. So okay. it, it felt yeah. like we got like a club night in, uh, sorry, a, a city night in, in Chesterfield. It was really good, yeah. really good club night. I mean, we had we had uh, Aquarius, didn't we? I mean, you know, what are your... Um, what are your favourite parts of Derbyshire then, Kai? I, I, I mean, to be honest, we're so lucky right here, especially in Chesterfield, we've got the Peak District right on our doorstep. Yeah. The landscape is amazing. I'm 20 quite, minutes, any direction. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm a sucker for just writing so much crap, but amongst the crap, there's some good stuff. Uh-huh. And I'm, I'm trying to write something about our landscape because we're so lucky to have it. Yeah, um, And also just the artists as well. I, I, mm-hmm. I've, I just feel so lucky to be surrounded by so many... Um, talented people and people that are are up and coming, and that okay. I feel like we can go on that journey together. I think that's the important I think we can. thing. You know what I mean? Yeah, I really um, do. You know, yeah. and this is really exciting. This podcast, okay? Because you know, I mean, your list of people is pretty extensive, and I feel like it okay, could go on for a while. I didn't, I didn't really need to try that hard though. You know, I, just, I mean, I actually wrote that's, that list. I was in Sri Lanka. We were on holiday in January, and yeah. it's just like. And we're on this amazing train journey. I was yeah. like, right, okay, I'm, I'm kind of, yeah, I'm, I'm in, in the moment. Let's, let's sort of do it. And yeah. like, it was just easy, you know. There's course, so many yeah. great people. Because we need to sort of be. We need to celebrate it a bit more. I think yeah. really. Oh, we definitely do. Yeah. So, so okay. What, what about your? Um, yeah. What was I going to say? Documentary. Um, Can't talk about it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, that's my next thing. But remember that stand ups on Amazon Prime. You're still okay. able to watch yeah. it right now. <laughs> Look out for stand up on Amazon Prime. Um, it's it's really it's well worth it. Um, well yeah. worth the three ninety nine guys. <laughs> that's how much it is. I can't, I can't, I can't remember. But um, I'll put a link. I'll put a link in the description below. Um, but Kai, thank you so much, man. Thank you um, for having me. Thank yeah, you. I've really enjoyed it. We could go on for ages, but the batteries have run out, haven't they? But, um, <laughs> it's a good yeah, excuse. Nice, though, nice and professional. It's a learning curve. We'll, we'll yeah. kind of we'll, we'll yeah. get some uh, we'll get yeah. some more batteries. Yeah. I'll try and pop um, back in the future for another. Yeah, show. Um, let's let's have you on again in yeah. in a couple of months and, and see how things sure are progressing thing, for sure you. Thing. So, sure but yeah, thing. cheers, bro. You're nice so one. Thanks, yeah, man. thank cheers. you so much. Okay, that's a wrap, guys. Um, thank you for tuning in again and staying till the end. If you did, uh, instead of fast forwarding through please be sure to like and subscribe it'll help me make a lot more uh, we've got loads coming up including sam from patawawa matlock band who are doing really well at the moment got a new album coming out and john cutris who has written a book about chesterfield and the carlton club in the 50s and 60s be sure to tune in. I've listened to what you had to say and we've got some merchandise coming up, um, mugs, t-shirts, lighters, chopping boards, whatever, you know. And we're launching a website really soon. So look out for that too. Thanks for all your help again. Until next time.